नमस्ते प्रणाम गीता ध्यान पार्थय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्य महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी अंबत्वासंदा भगवदीते भवद्वेषिणी ओ भगवदीता विथ विच लॉर्ड नारायण हिमसेल्फ गेव एनलाइटमेंट टू अर्जुन द एंशंट सेज व्यास इंक्लूडेड इट इन द महाभारत ओ गॉडेस शावर ऑफ द नेक्टर लाइक नॉलेज ऑफ नॉन डिजम कंटेंट इन योर एटीन चैप्टर्स ओ माई अफेक्शनेट मदर द डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ री बर्थ आई मेडिटेट अपॉन दी कृष्ण वंदना वसुदेवसुत देव कंस चाणूर मर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु सन ऑफ वसुदेव द स्लेयर ऑफ कंस एंड चाणूर एक्सट्रीम डिलाइट फॉर मदर देवकी ओ लॉर्ड कृष्ण द सुप्रीम टीचर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स माय सैल्यूटेशन टू यू श्रीमद भगवद गीता sixth adhyay dhyana yoga and uh, today we will uh, read the 26th shloka 26th verse uh, on controlling the mind in the previous uh, shloka or the 25th shloka that we read shri krishna told us he assured us he, he in fact consoled us such a great word of consolation that he knows it is extremely difficult to bring the mind under our strictest control all of us so shri krishna gives a leave he gives some kind of relaxation some he he is lenient on that account krishna says shanaihi shanaihi uparameta buddhya druti gruhitaya shanaihi shanaihi slowly slowly do you don't just hasten let it happen slowly slowly bit by bit but uparamet let him let this yogi who is going to meditate let him attain the calmness shanaihi shanaihi uparamet buddhya let him attain the calmness of the mind the quietude of the mind of the by, by the intellect buddhya by the intellect let him attain the quietude little by little Slowly, slowly, gradually. Dhruti gruhitaya. Dhruti gruhitaya is held in firmness by holding the intellect in firmness. Let him attain this quietude gradually. Atma sanstha mana krutva. Hmm? Mana. The intellect is the superior to mind. So with the intellect. being held firmly holding firmly on to the intellect atma sanstham mana krutva holding the intellect firmly let him gradually focus the mind on atma sanstham place the mind on the self on the atman na kinchida pi chintayet at one condition he should not think of any other thing then it may take time but let him practice to bring the mind get focused on the atman atma sanstham mana krutva na kinchid api chintayet he is not supposed to think of anything else he should not think of anything else just focus the mind focusing the mind is the ultimate thing because mind plays the tricks it is not the intellect that plays the tricks so shri krishna says that you 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 surrender yourself to the intellect let have the grasp of that intellect and intellect grasp the mind let intellect take control of the mind and 
pours it onto the Atman without thinking anything else. What a beautiful uh, clear cut instruction Sri Krishna has given understanding the problems that people face. They cannot focus the mind straight away onto the Atman. So take the help of, help of that beautiful thing which the Lord has provided to us, the buddhi, the intellect. Now in this 26th shloka, uh, Sri Krishna again is reiterating the same fact of putting the mind on the self. Yato yato nishcharati manah chanchala masthiram tataha tataha niyam metad atmaneva atman yeva vasham nayet. Yato yato nishcharati yatoho yatoho yataha yataha as and when. Hmm? From whatever cause, whatever cause, what happens? Nishcharati wanders. Nihi charati. Charati is wandering or going away. Who is going away? Manaha. Manaha chanchalam asthiram. Sri Krishna knows it so well, the predicament that the devotees, the spiritual aspirants undergo. The mind is so chanchal. Hmm? The mind is so restless and asthiram, unsteady. It will never get focused on one place. Sri Krishna knows it. Yataha yata, as and when, for whatever reasons, Sri Krishna says, the mind, this chanchal mind, this restless mind, this asthira mind, this unsteady mind, it wanders away for whatever cause. Tataha, tataha. Hmm? Uh, in, in the same way, from that, niyamya. Niyamya is having restricted. Etad atman neva vasham nayet. The, for whatever cause the mind scatters away. Doesn't matter. Tat tat. All during all such conditions, during all such happenings of mind wandering away, niyamya etat patmani. Control it. Bring it back from that object. And atmani niyamya uh, niyamya atmani etat vasham nahi. Let him once again put it back on the self. So, the mind scatters. That is the basic tendency of the mind. mind and that is where mind differs from the intellect. Why it is the intellect which constantly keeps on telling do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. Mind is chanchala and asthira. Mind can't decide for its own. Not like intellect. And therefore, it just runs away, wanders away, scatters away from one point to another point to another point. But when a yogi is meditating, when the aspirant is meditating, the mind has to be focused on the self. And when we sit for meditation, forget about self. Mind will never get focused on the self. Rather, mind will start wandering away on so many things. So Sri Krishna says, whenever this happens, just grasp the mind, pull it back and put it back on the self. It may happen, but by practice you have to do it. By whatever cause, the wavering mind wanders away, wavering and unsteady. The restless and unsteady mind Wavers or wanders away. Let him curb it from that. Let that yogi curb the mind from that using the intellect as told in the 25th shloka. Buddhya. Using the intellect, curb that mind from wandering away and subjugate it. Subjugate it. Put it back on the solely to the self. So that is uh, the literal uh, translation of the shloka. Uh, the commentary goes like, uh, there are misrants who while posing 
to act within the bounds of law try to circumvent it to their selfish ends now some misunderstandings we are supposed to work under certain boundary of the law and ethics and morality but some misunderstandings are there they will be working within that boundary but they will try to circumvent those laws laid down by ethics and morality and uh, the the the, the uh, goodness so they will always try to see the loopholes how we can break the law how we can get out of it the mind is like that mind plays the same mischief while yet in the process of subjugation the moment we try to fix it on the self we try to bring it under the control of a law the law is mind should be put on the self that is the law but mind is a misrent mind is a tricky fellow mind is restless by nature its nature is to wander away so it will find the loopholes and while we are making all the effort to put the mind on ourselves it will suddenly without our notice go to that place go to that place go there what i was doing what i was doing in office what i was what i had seen when i had gone for the walk what i did what i that what that fellow is doing the mind will start thinking all these things but thinking about the self when weaned away from one object it gets unwittingly attached to another we bring the mind here it goes there we try to pull it from there to here in the meantime the mind from there has gone there then we go hey baba come back come back come back but by the time which can we catch hold of it from the second place it has already gone to the third place that is the asthira mind that is the chanchal mind with proper discrimination it has to be saved from several pitfalls and placed safely at the feet of the lord and this is where time and again we have to bring our intellect into focus into picture and let that intellect tell the mind hey my dear friend your duty is to get focused over here don't go outside there is so much of a bliss and peace and happiness and uh, joy over here just get focused on this the intellect we have to take help this is the purport of his exhorting the attainment of calmness stage by stage and that's what shri krishna says this is how this is how the yogi can attain the peace can attain the bliss can attain that eternal joy gradually don't hasten don't force also there is no need to put a severe force of mind let me see how you are going it doesn't happen mind cannot be restrained like that it is only it can only obey the command of the intellect let intellect handle the mind and everything will be smooth that's what shri krishna has given us this assurance the danger of a fall is possible until the mind is complete until the mind is completely made over to the god and it is only when the mind finally rests on the self finally subjugates to the self that there is no more danger because then the mind understands and mind is a wonderful tool for that matter the moment it understands the moment it realizes that this is the place where it has to be not here 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 there no the moment it happens that is the ultimate peace and ultimate peace for the spiritual aspect so this is what shri krishna has told as it when it happens let it happen yato yato nishcharati mana chanchalam asthiram so you just put it back tatah tatah niyam ne etat atmani eva vasham nayet the mind will come under control you don't worry about it you just practice it putting back using the help of buddhi 
Now what uh, Sri Krishna, uh, Sri Ramakrishna has to say on this? The vision of the Lord is not possible as long as even an iota of desire is left lingering in the mind. Un unless and until we get rid of all those desires from the mind and for that intellect is to be used. Get rid of the desires. Let the mind fulfill some of those tiny desires. Let him fulfill. You ought to therefore fulfill the innocent and harmful, harmless little desires. You therefore ought to fulfill the innocent and harmless desires before doing away with them and to mercilessly exterminate the baneful ones with the sword of discrimination. All those tiny desires, okay, I want to eat uh, fish, I want to eat chicken, I want to... Uh, 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 you know, go to the temple. Let 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 the mind fulfill all those innocent and harmless desires. Beautiful words Sri Ramakrishna has used. Even in desires, there are categories. There are some desires which are very innocent. There are some desires which are absolutely painful. So Sri Ramakrishna says, use discrimination. Use the power of discrimination of what is right, what is wrong. Fulfill all those innocent and harmless desires. Let the mind be satisfied. But when it comes to the unwanted desires, when it comes to those baneful desires, then you have to be very strict. Nothing doing. You have to be a strict person to your mind in those cases. Like the parents become strict with their children when they see their children are going off the track. In the same way, Sri Ramakrishna says that be strict with the mind. Use discrimination. No means no. Nothing doing. But the simple, hmm, the, 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 the uh, harmless, innocent desires. Let the mind enjoy. You want to eat rasagulla? Okay, have one. You want to eat ice cream? Have some. You want to read this book? Read it. You want to go to a place of pilgrimage? Go enjoy. Fulfill all these desires of the mind, the innocent and harmless ones, the uplifting desires for that matter. And so some may be, I mean, okay, some may, may not be uplifting, but they won't do any harm. At least they will be harmless. So fulfill those desires. But when it comes to the wrong ones, be strict, use the discrimination and just cut them like the sword, cutting an unwanted thing into two pieces. Cut the desires using the sword of discrimination. So that is what Sri Ramakrishna says. So as and when mind goes away, fine. Bring it back, put it back using discrimination, using buddhi, using intellect and let it continue, have pra practice to bring the mind back onto the self. So that is what Sri Krishna told us in this 26th shloka of the 6th Adhyaya, the Dhyana Yoga of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Shri Krishna Arpanamastu, Jai Shri Ramakrishna, Jai Thakur, Jai Mahal, Jai Swamiji.